So our time is short. And last night was an interesting, it's an interesting night of sleep. All day yesterday was, was a bit interesting um, because uh, I'm, I'm in the middle of... <laughs> I don't even know. I need you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this to you stuff. right now. Great. I'm gonna send this to you right now, and okay. and you'll put it up. Um, I, I I'm I'm in the middle of a session, and uh, all of a sudden I, the the news breaks. Here we go. We've been going back and forth. Obviously, the HBO show um, has been in the works for a while. Craig Mazin comes on. Boom got literally one of the best showrunners, best writers. Uh, if you don't agree with me as far as best, especially writers for television right now, go listen to his podcast. If you if you didn't watch Chernobyl, your opinion is a little bit disqualified, but it, it, listen to his, his podcast, uh, Script Notes, and you'll find out what his ethos and his, um, his process of writing is, and it's fantastic. Uh, the fact that uh, what often happens a lot of times in, in TV or film adaptations is the original creator may get like a little bit of a, a blip and say created by or, or we reference this person, but he really has nothing to do with this. They make sure that they involve Neil Druckmann um, so that he's involved in this and so that, that this feels like a spiritual successor as opposed to a cash grab. And the, the notion of HBO making it a television show versus what the original plan was, which is to make it a movie, which how do you summate 12 hours, 15 hours of an experience um, and all the subsequent stuff that you could roll into it um, into an hour and a half or two hours. Um, so you, you, you spell it out to a series. So you've got these great people that are, that are spearheading and is show running this thing. And then that begs the question, who are you going to put in the role? The biggest surprise to me was not the casting choice. The biggest surprise to me was something that was revealed how I felt about one of the casting choices. So Bella Ramsey comes down the pike and, and, and Variety, I think, was the first one. It was either Variety or Deadline, whichever one you happen to pull up first. Um, I have the, uh, the Deadline up here. Uh, yesterday, yeah, I feel it was like even a little bit earlier because I'm in a session and all of a sudden, Bella Ramsey, HBO has found one of its leads for the upcoming The Last of a Series. Deadline confirmed that Game of Thrones breakout star, Bella Ramsey, known as Leona Mormont. I say that right? Stars is the pugnacious but brave. Leona Mormont will play Ellie. And uh, first of all, she was lights out in, in Game of Thrones. Um, what a badass queen. So to be able to go, oh, I can see how that person would play that character. Smart choice. Really, really smart choice. There's not enough that's establishing her in something. So you have to work around all of the roles that she's done. And so you can just accept her for this role. You've seen her in Game of Thrones. There's a few. She's actually done a lot. She's pretty. Um, God bless America. That's awesome. Um, she's done a lot. She's, she's, this isn't her first go around. Though HBO is yet to announce who will appear as Ellie's companion, Joel, the series based off Neil Druckmann's 2013 video game is getting into shape. In January, the premier cable work announced that Bean Pole Helmer... I thought you might want to know. So I was like, that is a fantastic choice for Joel. Um, but here's what, here's what it revealed to me. Then, I, well, you know, obviously you guys know, but what happened subsequently to that is just a few hours later, a deadline said Pedro Pascal to star as Joel in the last of his HBO series based on the video game. So here's Pedro Pascal. And my immediate response was,
considerably more controversial. But especially after last year, it, it comes out uh, amidst COVID, amidst the craziness, the leaks happen, all of this, and then it is just instant internet vitriol over the betrayal of a character, Joel, and this new introduction of a new character, Abby, and all of this. And so then it gets really, really dicey. Who do you choose to play Joel? Now, I remember being in the airport lounge at LAX, and I ran into someone that I had bumped into uh, while doing a movie in New Mexico. And I'm, I'm, I met with him again. I kind of stand up. I was like, hey, man, I, I don't know if you remember me or not. We did a movie together, or we, we were uh, filming together. You were doing this movie. I was doing that movie. We almost were in the same movie together. And I said, uh, but you were very kind to me on the, that, that night. He's like, I do remember that. It was a great night. And I said, listen, there's a, there's a movie that they're going to make about a game that I've been in. And, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that a lot of what I based my character off of um, was was inspired by you. And if you ever get the opportunity, if they ever present this to you, just um, just, just at least look at the script. And that was to Josh Brolin. <laughs> and he was like, all right, well, you know, look into it. <laughs> and then many years later, cut back. Here's what I realized, or the, what, this, what this choice revealed to me, is when people ask me, who would you want to play Joel? And I do not want to play Joel. I never had any aspirations to play Joel in, in a movie adaptation or a TV adaptation because I've, I've done what I could. I, I took Joel as far as I could, and it's time for somebody else to take him further. And that's my true desire, is that someone takes him further. But all of the people that I, in my mind, played out playing as Joel, Josh Brolin, uh, Nikolai whatever from, from Game of Thrones, or, or all the other people, that Hugh Jackman, all these other people that threw out. And here's what I... What, what was revealed to me in this is that I kept Joel in this box and I didn't allow for other people to be, and I, I kept saying how much I wanted someone to interpret the role and reinterpret the role and change the role. And what I realized is my background and everything was, was precluding me from considering anybody other than white dude. That was my thinking. Who's Joel? First and foremost, white dude. Now, there was talk about other people, Marshal Ali being one of them playing Joel. I think he would have crushed it. Clearly, the guy's a fantastic actor. What I do feel, though, is that I don't know if the audiences are, are savvy enough and hip enough to not allow the casting of him to overshadow his performance. And it would have been too much controversy about doing that. So leading to Pedro Pascal, perfect, amazing, brilliant choice all around. Number one, guy can act. Act the shit out of the role. Can't wait to see what he does. Instantly, by the sheer notion of who he is and his sensibility brings inherently a new sensibility to Joel. That excites me. I feel like I'm going to meet Joel for the first time. It's not someone who's trying to do a version that I did or that was in the game, but it's truly something new without a betrayal of the character. And then finally, I can't help but think that HBO went, who's bulletproof right now? Pedro Pascal. You might as well have Joel holding a sack full of kittens and puppies. You got you. You can't say you don't like Pedro Pascal. Come on, come on. <laughs> it's the smartest way to walk the character in. So I tweeted out when Bella uh, uh, Bella Ramsey gets cast. I was I do my typical thing, discuss, stir the pot of the internet. Let me see what happens. And boy, they smelled the blood as a blah 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 blah, blah instantly. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to jump in here real quick. And I said, I don't know how many casting directors, writers, directors, actors. I don't know how many people are perusing and participating in this thread. But I do know how many of those incredibly talented, top-notch people are involved in the casting of this very, very expensive 
show. They're not hacks. So I'm going to listen to Craig Mazin. I'm going to listen to Neil Druckmann. I'm going to listen to HBO. And, and feel pretty good, pretty good about that, that decision to trust them because they've proven themselves. And everybody can sit here in sideline and Monday morning quarterback what Game of Thrones should have been and what Lost should have been and everything else. But if you haven't written fade in on a blank white page or a blinking screen or a blinking cursor on a screen, if you haven't spent however many hundreds of days on a set, either behind the camera or in front of it, and made a show, I'm, I'm, I'm not discounting your perspective or your opinion. I'm just not going to lend as much credence to it as I will someone who has. There's a friend of mine who was a director and I said, I think because I, I was wanting to set myself as a, uh, as a director. And I said, I think I need to do a short. He goes, don't waste your time. It's not that shorts are a waste of time, but if you're trying to prove that you could direct, don't do a short because that doesn't prove that you can do anything other than a short because you haven't spent as much time with it and allowed all of the multiple things that could go wrong on a movie that's that's 18 day shoots or 21 day shoots or 60 day shoots or 50 or 150 day shoots if you're Peter Jackson. <laughs> so it's not about what you've done with this little bit. You've learned something. So it doesn't discount your opinion, but you might want to listen to the people that have done this multiple times. So I really, really love this choice. And we're sitting here and I tweet out last night. I was like, all right, I'm going to be a little bit more forthcoming. I was waiting for the Joel announcement to come so that people could see. And I don't care what people are going to say about me. I believe in this choice. And so I tweeted out, fuck yeah. Cannot wait to see what I learn about Joel from Pedro. Buckle up, y'all. We're going for a ride. And that's genuinely how I feel. I am not paid, cajoled pressured, pushed, asked, anything to tweet anything. Sony does not own my social. Neil Druckmann did not ask me to tweet anything. Hey, can you support us? He doesn't need my help. He's got, I think, more followers than I do. The game certainly does. This is me as a fan of the series and as a fan of this actor saying, I can't wait as a fan. I have no idea what they're doing story-wise, by the way. I know they're going to expound upon it. But as we're sitting here getting ready, all of a sudden, I get a like and a comment from Pedro. And he just simply gave me the high five and a king. And to that, I would say this, man. I got to wear that crown for a little bit. And heavy is the head that wears the crown. And the last day that I was on set, I think the last scene that we shot was the porch scene. And when we, when Neil said cut, and he said, best that, moving on. I took that crown off because everything that I had to do with Joel I left everything on the dance floor. That's the one thing that I can say. Whether you liked my performance, whether you liked that story, whether you liked that game or not, everybody left everything on the dance floor with that. We didn't walk away with anything. We walked out empty. And that goes naughty dog from, from cast, crew, everybody. There wasn't anybody that had anything left in the tank <laughs> when that game shipped. That's the thing I can hold my head high about is that I, I did everything that I could to show you who Joel was. And so that crown remained there. And now it's time for this guy to pick it up. And it'll be on his head. And his head will be heavy because it's a big crown. But I can truly say with all sincerity, genuineness, and excitement as a fan that I cannot wait to watch this show. I cannot wait for Pedro to do something that I went, that I disagree with, that I think is different. He put up this great, um, I think it was on Instagram. He said, uh, 
what, what was it? What was this thing that he said? I, I I can't remember. He quoted the game. Someone's probably going crazy right now. Let me see what he said. Uh, Pedro Pascal. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But it just showed that he's that he is aware of. Now, yeah, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. And that's that's what it's all about. It's him coming at this as a fan. And he ironically chose one of my favorite scenes was the first scene that we shot for the game. The truck, the truck ambush is what we called it. This man understands the shoes and the crown that he is placing himself into. And if anybody has the strength, the prowess, the juice. Man, I'm looking at it. It's going to be great. Bring it on, Pedro. Let me see what you got. I got a few minutes. I want to know what you think. If you have a question, uh, fire it off in the chat. I would love to know what you guys, what your reactions to it are. No, oh, man, I'm, I'm just watching you. I'm watching you freak out because I, I wanted to do this so quickly. I was like, I have, I've had three cups of coffee and I've got 15 minutes. Why don't we do a podcast? That's the beauty of all this. So I get to do this. I'm getting ready, by the way, while, while we're kind of taking opportunity. Uh, literally, I'm going to have about 10 minutes to turn around. Uh, speaking of, uh, today is uh, the first day that we're launching this little actor workshop that, that we're going to do. Um, I'm going to show you what, what I know. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just here to pass on the the wisdom and the experience that I've been fortunate enough to garner over the last 15 years or whatever. And then as we go through this process, uh, every, uh, every Thursday, 1P, 4P, 9P, um, I'm going to introduce you to people who I've met that have helped me and guided my, my path, as it were. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, casting agents, directors, um, different people throughout the industry, people who have helped me set up my booth at home. So if you're wanting to learn how to set up a, a home rig, we're going to fund uh, talk about all the fundamentals of acting and specific to this brand of industry, whether it be animation or, or, um, or gaming. Um, and if you want to find out more about that, uh, just go to patreon.com forward slash relator and you can find out uh, how you can be a part of that. It's going to be a super small focus class. And it's going to happen one hour every Thursday, uh, 1p, 4p, 9p. Um, anybody? Yeah. Nobody? Uh, if uh, they do do the test scene, who would your dream casting be? That's from Amelia Brown. They do the test scene? Tess. Oh, Tess? Look, man, I, I, I don't want to... It's hard for me. And and again, I, I, I default to Craig and Neil, especially, whoever their casting agent or the casting director is for this because they've done a bang-up job so far. It's hard for me to see past. I'm trying in, in these conversations that we have, and over, especially over the last year, uh, I've been trying to widen my worldview and broaden my perspective because I realize that it's very narrow. And I don't want it to be that way. And so it includes... Even when you ask me that question, it's hard for me to see outside of Annie Wershing. Um, because when I close my eyes and I think about Tess, that's who I see. Um, even so much of the model of, of Tess looks like Annie Wershing. I, I think that she could do a bang-up job. Um, clearly, she has the on-camera experience, and it's not even about that. She's just a fine actor. Um, but I also understand if we start pulling from this world into here... I don't know that the the big thing is Bill. I mean, God damn it, Earl Brown. I mean, it, he is Bill. He brought so much to. We saw a lot of people for Bill, by the way, um, and there were a, a lot of actors that you would know. Like, holy shit! And they crushed it. What Earl brought to that role created Bill. Literally, there's there's scenes that he said that he and Neil workshop together that that helped craft the character of Bill. Um, so it's hard for me to see outside of that because once you start doing this weird hybrid, I don't want to feel like bewitched where we're just bringing in a different Darren and expecting everyone to believe it's the same guy. You know, I, 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 I feel like you have to do something fresh and you have to do something across the board. I also, people were like, I think it'd be funny. And I made jokes before saying it. I just want to be a clicker and be funny. Um, <laughs> well, that is another question. If you were asked, would you? 
Um, as long as, as I was right for the role, as long as Craig and Neil were like, hey, listen, man, because here's, here's the beauty of The Last of Us. It doesn't need me as a gimmick. I don't need an on-set visit and a photo op. I want, if, I, if I'm going to be a part of this series, it's going to be because someone goes, I think you'd be great in this role. But what I don't want to do is have anybody go, ah, I see what they did. They put the two jewels next to each other. If it, if it makes sense to be like, Troy and Pedro need to have a scene together, or this character and Joel got a scene together. But I don't need that, man. I, I, don't, I don't need to, to feel, I don't need my ego stroked, and I don't need a, a wink to the audience for their blessing. And I'm certainly not the person that's going to bless this show. Jesus Christ, look at the cast that you already have. Look at the writers. Look at who's in charge. It doesn't need my sanctioning at all. <laughs> or blessing or baptism at all. Um, this was the question back, but there's a lot of comments, so I didn't see where it's from. All right. Are they going to adapt, do you think, they're going to adapt the both stories or just part one? Look, the, the, the beauty... <laughs> God damn it, Tom. What I do. This is what I love. My dear friend, Sean, Jack Septic guy, uh -huh. text me and goes, can't hear you on stream when you go okay, picture well, in picture. I fixed that. It was fixed. <laughs> I fixed it. <laughs> I saw it and then I figured it out. <laughs> Look, man, we're I not this, as, we're not as, we're not as. You texted me 15 minutes before we started and yeah, I said, that's, I'll that's figure true. it out. In, in your defense, in your defense, I gave you no time. No time. Um, come teach us, come teach me how to stream, Sean. Anyone. I love you, buddy. Um. What was the question? <laughs> if they were going to, do you think they will adapt both part one and part two? Oh, I look, the beauty of doing a TV series is that you can uh, expound on it exponentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, so do you think they might split it up? Like, here's the Boston parts? I mean, I, I've always said this. I have no idea. I'm not as good of a writer as Craig. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly can't build world, nor as Neil. But I mean, I, I definitely think that it was a global pandemic, you know? This yeah. is this is a uh, something that happened across the world. So I don't think it has to be limited to Philadelphia, Boston, Colorado, Seattle, Texas. I think you could go. What happened in New York? Florida just looked the same. Yeah, <laughs> it's just film right now. Yeah, just <laughs> shut. That's what it looks like. So I don't. I have no idea. I would love for this to be a thing. I, I wanted to. Do, <laughs> I wanted to go forever, and then I wanted to be like a limited series. You know what I mean? I yeah. wanted to be like, holy shit, they're doing three seasons, and, and that's it. Um, I don't think. I don't want this to become Walking Dead. I'm not disparaging anybody that's on that show, working that show, or loves that show. I just don't want it to be that. Um, I, I I feel like that is just not what this needs to be. That 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 becomes. It, if the, in the truest sense of the word, soap opera, as far as it, it's about the relationships with each other. Um, and I think that even though The Last of Us is about relationships, it is obvious that the other thing that it's about is the relationship with the world. So I, I would love for, um, I would love for them to, to, I don't know, man, I just want to see what they do. So I genuinely to, am open. Would you be open to hosting Talking Last of Us? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing the only thing that would qualify me to host something like that is I love this 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 story and I am passionate about it there's like two things that I could go hard on uh, The Last of Us and Daredevil <laughs> you better love it more than I do um, so, I mean, I, I, or the, or the matrix, if anybody knows me, you could probably, um, I could do a talk <laughs> to them all for the together. Matrix. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I, I don't see this being a, I love for those conversations to exist in the public square rather than, um, as a piece of content. Uh, I, I think that there could be, I would love to participate, even if it's just a fly on the wall for people that are having those conversations. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I have played through all three games, um, some of them multiple. I've only played through part two once, and I was talking to somebody else yesterday about it. 
They're like, I don't know if I can do a second one. I was like, I'm not sure if I can do it either right now. I want to because I know that there's so much that I missed out on. And just the sheer nature of the world and the mechanics offer the opportunity to have a completely different playthrough the second time. But the first, that first time, it's just like, it was impactful. Um, I, I have never, I made the game and I still cried multiple times. Um, I can't watch the opening scene of part one without crying still to this day, uh, mainly due to the, the, the beauty of, of Hana, fantastic actor. That's who I'm curious to see if they do, who they get to play Sarah. Um, but this is the, this is the point. It's the speculation and the, and the dart throwing of, of different actors. I just want to encourage everybody. Um, it's a fun game to play, but as long as that remains recreational and it doesn't go to the speculation stops at entertainment and it doesn't go into establishing your mindset because this story, if you truly love this story, if you truly respect these characters, then allow them to change, allow them to evolve and allow them to be bigger. I, this is what I had to do. I had allow, I had to allow for Joel to become bigger than my understanding of him and my perception of him and my picture of him. And I'm glad that, that somebody who had a wider perspective was in charge of that casting choice because I, I just, I, I, I literally can't wait. So, um, we invite you to continue this conversation online with your conversations and discourse, which means listening to each other and understanding that you have an opinion and they have an opinion. And somewhere in between lies the truth. So thank you for hanging out with us while we discuss this in real time. Um, if you want to be a part of that acting workshop, go to uh, patreon.com forward slash relator. Find out how you can be a part of it. We do all sorts of shit throughout the week. Uh, if you haven't listened also, you want to hear another fantastic actor. We did a, a great podcast with uh, uh, my boy Abu Salim. I get to call him Abu because he's my friend. Um, that is up on our YouTube. All stuff. All the typical stuff. Whatever. Uh, leave us your comments below because I do read them. That's what keeps me awake at night is wondering what you guys are thinking. <laughs> uh, thank you for participating in this conversation as we all seek desperately to learn how to share our story. Until we speak again, stay rad. <laughs>